Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Lee. I wanted to do this video to say hi to all of you and let you know how much I miss you. I miss you all very, very much. And I hope that you and your families are doing well. So today I'm going to read a story to you. And then after I read the story, I'll post another video where we can do an activity together to talk about what we read. So the name of our book today is called Splat the Cat Oopsie Daisy. And this is a series book, and that means that there are many stories written about our character Splat the Cat. So you might have read some of these books before about Splat the Cat, and if you have, then that'll help you understand our book a little bit more as we read it. So Splat the Cat, Oopsie Daisy. It was almost springtime. The weather was getting warmer, but the sky was still gray and rainy. Splat thought about being stuck inside, he said it was a waste of a Saturday afternoon. Splat perked up when a sopping wet Seymour scurried into his room. Seymour was carrying a weird looking seed. Where did you get that? asked Splat. Seymour held up the seed and stared at it. Then he shrugged again. I wonder what kind of seed it is, said Splat. It could be anything. Well, there's only one way to solve this mystery, Seymour. Let's see if we can make it grow. I think we need to plant it first, Splat said, but I've never planted anything before. Do you know how to plant a seed? Seymour shrugged. Okay, then let's go to the library to find out, Splat announced. So they're on their way to the library and the sign says cat school this way and library that way. So they are going to the library. Splat and Seymour walk straight to the library to look for a book about gardening. The only problem was that there was so much information, Splat wanted to grow only one seed, not a whole field of corn. After staring at the shelves for a long time, Splat finally asked the librarian. She was happy to help him find the perfect book. And the book says, A Cat's Guide to Plants and Potting. So hopefully that book will help them learn what to do with their seed. The book said the first step was getting a pot and filling it with soil. Not all the soil landed in the pot. Splat! There you see that all of the soil, most of it, ended up on the ground. Next, Splat planted the seed in the dirt. He set the flower pot on a sunny windowsill. Then he watered the soil. Not all the soil water went in the pot. Splat checked the flower pot every day. He hoped and hoped for any sign of a sprout. He wondered what kind of plant it would be. Maybe the seed would grow into a wild garden of roses. Or maybe the seed would grow into a tree as tall as the sky. Splat couldn't wait to see what grew. He sang to the seed, read to it, and told its stories. For two whole weeks, Splat waited and waited for the seed to do something. Splat was ready to give up. Maybe the seed would never sprout. Feeling terribly disappointed, he watered the soil one last time just in case. The dirt in the pot shifted a little when Splat added water. A tiny green sprout sprang up. Splat cheered loudly, but quickly shut his mouth. He didn't want to scare the little plant back in the soil. During the next week, the sprout grew a few straggly leaves. Splat was thrilled when a few days later, a little bud appeared atop the stem. The next day, the bud opened and a bloom blossomed. It wasn't a wild jungle plant, or a many colored rose, or a tall, tall tree. It was a flower, a little daisy, and Splat knew just who to give it to. I love it, said Mom. It's the most special flower ever. Splat smiled as he hugged his mother. I grew it myself, Splat said, with a little help from Seymour.
So that is the end of our story. I hope that you enjoy the book, Splat the Cat, Oopsie Daisy. And I'm going to post another video where we can talk about the book that we just read and do a little activity. Okay, have a great day. Hi. <laughs> Bye. Hi, boys and girls, it's Mrs. Lee. So we just finished reading our story, Splat the Cat, Oopsie Daisy. So now we are going to talk about what we read together today. And one of the things that we're going to talk about is we are going to talk about the character's feelings in the story. And this is a question that we discuss a lot when we read together. And many times when I ask you how the character feels during the story, you say good or happy or mad or bad. So today we're going to look at some other words that we can use to describe how our characters are feeling in the story. So I have a chart here that I made that is a list of some feelings, some words that we can use to describe how our character is feeling in the story. Okay, so I have happy, which is a word that we use a lot, but let's look at some other words that we can use instead of happy. We can say that our character is excited or maybe our character is surprised. Maybe there was a surprise in the story. Hopeful, proud, brave, and curious. Okay, so a lot of times we like to say happy or good because that's the first thing that comes to our mind, but we have to really think about what's happening in the story and think about other words that describe how our character is feeling. Let's look at some other words we could use for feelings that sometimes are not good feelings. Sad is a word that we use a lot, but let's look at some other words. Worried, maybe your character is worried about something in the story or nervous or confused. Maybe they're confused and don't understand why something is happening in the story. Mad, angry, disappointed. Feeling disappointed about something. So for example, a lot of us are disappointed right now because although we're still learning, we're disappointed that we can't be in school together or annoyed. So these are some other words we can use to talk about how our character is feeling in the story, okay? So now what I want you to do is I want you to think about Splat in our story and think about how Splat felt in the story, okay? You can do two things. You can get a piece of paper and you can write about how Splat felt in the story. And then tell me when Splat felt that way. So for example, you could write something like this. Splat felt, and then write down how Splat felt. Splat felt blank when, and you're going to tell me when he felt that way. So you're going to put a feeling here how Splat felt, and then you're going to write down and tell me when Splat felt that way in the story. Okay, so that's one thing you can do is you can choose to write about the book. Another thing you can do if you don't want to write about it is you can find somebody at home, maybe your brother or a sister or an aunt or uncle or a mom or a dad or a grandma or a grandpa, and maybe they can take a video of you talking about Splat's feelings and when Splat felt that way. And then you can send the video to your teacher or to myself through Class Dojo or through email. So either of those choices would be great, but it's important for us to be talking and thinking about the stories that we're reading together, okay? So you're going to think about Splat in the story. You're going to think about how Splat felt and you are going to either write about how he felt and when he felt that way, or you can take a video and talk about Splat's feelings and when he felt that way. 
Okay, so I look forward to either seeing your work posted on Class Dojo or your video on Class Dojo um, to see what we thought about Splat's feelings. Okay, so remember, we're working on using different words to describe our character's feelings. And this is a feelings chart that you can use to help you think of different words to talk about Splat's feelings in the story. Okay.